we're talking Sing Sing. And for this, we're going to go to Todd first. Todd, okay. tell us about Sing Sing. Yes, yeah, so this was on my uh, most anticipated list of the summer. So this is the last one that I had to see. Um, it is directed by Greg Quidar. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it. Um, but it is a true story about a, a prison theater group at Sing Sing Correctional Facility. And um, almost all of the actors are the real life participants in this theater group. Uh, that is, except for Divine G, which is played by Coleman Domingo. And he's the founder of the group and someone who evidently is in prison for something he didn't do. And then there's also Brent, which is played by Oscar nominee Paul Racy. And, um, Oscar nominee and, Paul Racy. I guess Coleman Domingo is an Oscar nominee too, sorry. Um, <laughs> but um, Paul Racy is playing the director of the play. And the, But the rising star of the movie is Divine Eye, Clarence Macklin, playing himself, who is much more of like a hardened gangster in the prison. And he finds some sort of solace and escape in the group, it seems like. And uh, the movie's based on a book, and the story was collaborated on by like a handful of the principal characters in the movie. And uh, I, what I like about this movie, it's a prison movie, but it's not necessarily about like injustice. It's about finding inspiration when you have no other options. And like these guys are pretty much just like passing the time, using their charisma and skills uh, to like find a calling of some kind. And Divine Eye uh, particularly needed just like to learn to use his persona and passion as like a drug dealer and bring that to the stage. And he is magnetic in this. The, that's uh, the one thing that rang most true about the movie was his performance. And um, I mean, it, and like, I mean, it, to, to me, it reminded me of like when I read uh, Danny Trejo's auto, autobiography, it's like, I mean, people who do, have done time in prison are like really good actors eventually. Like Danny Trejo's entire career hinged on that exact thing. And uh, like it almost like he doesn't need to act like he's just basically playing himself. But it, but he has so much passion doing it that uh, it makes it something special. And that's Clarence Macklin in this. He's a, a revelation. Um, I think the movie is really authentic, um, mainly because all the actors are the real people. You never really feel like anybody is out of place. And Domingo is really good in this. But I don't think it's something that it necessarily will immediately blow you away. He's kind of the heart of the movie, but uh, he's far from the most interesting character. Um, and uh, Clarence Macklin, in, in his like awards trajectory, he's basically this year's Paul Racy, to be honest. Like he's a he's just unbelievable, and it's someone whose real life experiences are like fueling his performance and his uh, probably eventual Oscar campaign. Sing Sing as a movie is interesting because it plays a lot more like a documentary than a narrative feature, which isn't a bad thing. It just, it it, it kind of pulls you further away from what would have been like a normal manipulation type thing or like cheap tendencies because it's just so observant on the actual characters and let and 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 so stripped down in its in its budget and how it how it plays things um the story is it reminded me a little bit of like if you took a drama version of the longest yard and mixed it with shawshank where it's like you, you're kind of like finding these guys who have no direction you're pushing them to focus on something and like, like, you know, if you're gathering the troops for a big football game or like teaching the inmates to read or learning Shakespeare or whatever in this, um, it's all related. The, the the movie plays to me somewhat like The Wrestler also, where, it, I mean, it, it's not as as good as The Wrestler necessarily, but uh, similarly, it's like so in, in, in touch with its own world and only has a couple recognizable faces, but the performers are so unnaturalistic that uh, it really makes it work. And it's just a bare bones feel um, of, uh, of the drama. Um, and I mean, to me, it rocks a really fine line too, because I mean, so easily it could have been sentimental or too pointed, but it works because it, it, it somehow is slightly on the side of not being hokey. And I don't really know how it did that, but it, it was able to accomplish that. When I saw the movie, I saw there was one other person in the in the, in the theater when I saw it, and uh, she was weeping in the final scenes. It didn't like profound, profoundly move me the way it did to her, and the way it event, evidently did to a lot of people because this movie's got like rave reviews. But uh, it is really effective, uh, regardless. Uh, the one my one gripe with the movie is I don't really like the experimental camera angles. I, I thought that kind of took me out of the the moment for like the only the only thing that did really in the whole movie. And um, I also don't really understand the release strategy for this. It's it's similar to like the Hurt Locker when that came out. It was a Toronto movie, and for some reason they held on to it for till the following summer when it couldn't make any money. I don't really know why it's being released now, and now it's not like a big fall release and like have its awards trajectory start like uh, immediately. But 
here we are. It made basically no money and nobody's seen it. Hopefully it has a, it has some life though, because uh, it is really good. And I have it at three and a half stars. All right. I think this might've been a, a strike casualty last fall. I don't but this remember. isn't the kind of movie that would that would have been affected by that necessarily, but 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 if you possible. think you got an awards contender on your hand and but it's a oh. small time movie where you got to get your performers out there and you can't, it's possible. All right, but, Zach, where are but, you at? But with yeah, this? but these guys aren't, aren't the guys that you would like. This isn't like Hitman where you know you need to get Clint Powell on the campaign trail. Like this is like this sure. is a tiny movie, but sure. okay. Okay, so. Uh, why was this movie made? You know, this is a movie that is about um, some real people who, in many circumstances, play themselves in a real program, in a real prison. And the first question I had to ask was, why couldn't this have been a documentary? And the reason it couldn't have been a documentary is because I think Coleman Domingo is spectacular in this movie. And with all due respect to what, what Todd is saying, which is very true about Clarence Macklin, he is astonishing too. But Coleman Domingo, to me, this is an exceptionally high war performance. Um, I, first of all, his prison cell. Okay, it's one of the most interesting, we've talked about prison movies. It's probably the most interesting prison cell I've ever seen in a movie that didn't have Raquel Welch on a poster. Okay, it's got, it actually looks like a pretty cool place to hang out and he's got books and papers all over the place. Uh, Divine G is a fascinating, complex, rich character who comes from, we learn a little bit about his background. Apparently he, you know, was at the, the, the fame high school. We don't, uh, learn about, uh, why he was arrested. Although we, I guess it's, it's indirectly mentioned. And, you know, you could say that this is a movie about theater. You could say it's about prison. You could say it's about redemption. But really what this movie is about is something I think kind of deeper and more universal, which in I, I'm trying to think of a better word than this because it sounds a little patronizing, but it's about dignity. You know, this is a, a movie where all the characters are convicted felons, but the movie doesn't use that language. And there's a lot of, um, you know, talk uh, the last 10 years about how we phrase people in society. You know, do you call someone a victim? Do you call someone homeless? Do you call someone disabled? Or do you say that they're a person, a person who is disabled? Do you say they're a person who's homeless? This is a movie that, and again, there's no speech about this in the movie, but it made me think about it. This is a movie that very much is concerned with these men as men before they are felons or prisoners or convicts or anything like that. Um, the movie is not particularly interested in the decisions that they made or the circumstances that led them to being incarcerated at Sing Sing. It is much more interested in their personalities and uh, their passion for the theater. Um, there is a real great, uh, it, it's, I guess it's like a friendship, but a little bit of frenemies between Divine G and Divine I. Divine Eye is uh, also a rich, complicated character that we can't quite figure out because when we first see him, he's, uh, you know, in so involved in some sort of drug deal. He seems a, a lot more hardened than uh, the rest of uh, the, the, the characters in the story who are part of the theater program. But he's also, uh, he also just casually drops Hamlet, you know, he and he talks about, he mentions Shakespeare. I mean, this is obviously a guy with a lot of layers to him. Um, the scenes in this movie where they do the theater training, I think, are, are terrific. And, you know, Divine G talks a little bit about how, yeah, they're funny and it's kind of ridiculous, but it's a way to get closer to each other. And it's a way to rehabilitate um, through through theater and through the act of creation. Um, I think there are two kind of semi-related scenes in this movie that, uh, to me, are, you know, a Pino, you know, best scene worthy to me. And, and one of them, both of them are exercises that Paul Racy leads them in. One of them is where they talk about a memory that they that uh, uh, that occurred to them in their life. And then another scene is where they talk about someone who they'd really like to see, um, but they can't. Um, I'll push back a little bit on what Todd said about the cinematography. I think for a movie that is entirely based in a prison, this movie did a remarkable job of being visually interesting. Um, and, you know, I like the style. I like the grittiness. I like the filmic look. But this has some cool shots of hallways. Um, you know, there's a, a great shot of, like, barbed wire. Um, 
Is the movie like the Shawshank Redemption? Sure. I mean, I think it begs a little bit of comparison to that. Also in the sense that I think Coleman Domingo actually in a weird kind of way represents both aspects of Red and Andy. He's kind of trusted and he's kind of the revered figure almost like Red is, but he's also much more highly intelligent and articulate than pretty much anyone else uh, at Sing Sing. And that's, I guess, a little bit like Andy. Um, is there a prison escape in the movie? I mean, I'm not going to say that. Is there is there a subplot in the movie about clemency and about probation? I mean, those are, ne I think, necessary parts of the movie. The movie does kind of build up in almost like a sports movie-like fashion, which I think builds on the tension. Um, and in the end, you understand that this is a movie about resilience, and it's about how you survive... <laughs> Uh, not in the way of surviving like in a lot of other prison movies where you need a switchblade and you need to, you know, uh, toughen up, but uh, about internal survival and about the the, the search for hope. Um, I think A24 has botched the Oscar chances for this movie. I'm not sure why. Uh, Coleman Domingo, to me, should be a front runner for Best Actor. And, of course, um, uh, uh, Ma Clarence Macklin should be uh, considered for supporting actor. This is, uh, uh, to me, it should have been the announcement of the 2024 Oscar race because this is one of the very best movies I will see this year. I think it is extraordinary from start to finish. There are scenes in this movie that are as moving as anything I've seen. And to me, it's kind of easily a four-star movie. I was absolutely uh, uh, riveted from start to finish with this movie, even with the formula intact. And you can kind of see how it builds up like a sports movie, but I thought it was unforgettable and a wonderful look uh, at a worn genre. And I'm just going to end by saying, I think Coleman Domingo might be the best living actor today. He has never given a bad performance as far as I can tell. So uh, great movie. This is a rush to see it movie. Excellent all around. Yeah, I, I'm at four stars also. This is, um, I mean, later on we're going to talk about consensus average movies. Um, this is a consensus great movie. Like, you can't watch this movie. Like, you watch it and you go, oh, this is why everybody loves this. There's a reason and this is why. Uh, my favorite scene, which actually I found tears in my eyes after this one, is when uh, Divine Eye uh, finally delivers the soliloquy. And the power he gets in that in that de delivery of to be or not to be, it just like he got it, and he it, it all came full circle for him right there. And the way it was shot, and it, it was just a brilliant scene. And yeah, Coleman Domingo, tour de force in this. Uh, it, it is yeah, Shawshank is a great comparison. I, I like I like Longest Yard too. That that's a good one as well. Um, it, it is, it is a movie everyone should see, and and you guys are right. They kind of botched how they're releasing this, which is weird. I mean, maybe it continues to get wider and wider because, like, it, our tiny little art house theater was the only one that had it in town. Um, yeah, but that's but, the thing. Uh, it's like, like even it's like smaller numbers. It's not making money. Like, I mean, its per screen average is low. Like, it, it's weird that that it's. It's like usually movies like this, it'll be playing in like a hundred theaters, but it'll it'll be made it'll like have a really high average. But this doesn't for some reason people aren't. I don't I don't know if people know about it. I, I never saw a preview at the movies for it either. Well, and maybe it's it's something where the buzz is down for it because it debuted at last year's Toronto, and we're about to have this year's Toronto, and may, maybe that that's holding it back too. But yes, this definitely should be in the conversation for many Oscars. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, the Hurt Locker did the same thing. It was released in the in the middle of the summer. Nobody saw it, and it was had the reviews to still get all the way to Best Picture. And I don't think we're that far off of the three of us. I mean, obviously, at three and a half stars, I'm I'm right there with you guys. Like, it, it's this seems like the same conversation we had about past lives last year, where I had a couple of things that I, that drew me back a little bit, and you guys were just like, "This is the best movie of the year," pretty much. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm well, not gonna have any problem with that. One of the things I also really like about this movie is, um, yeah, it builds up to a big performance, but it's not really, if that's about as far as the sports metaphor will go, you know, remember the Titans had the big game at the end of the movie. This one, they get on stage. I, again, don't want, without spoiling it too much, the, folk, the, the point of the movie is not about whether they're great actors or not. 
And it's not about whether the play is even great or not, because the play, frankly, sounds kind of goofy. In fact, it's kind of meant to be goofy. There's conversations about why they're doing uh, a comedy as opposed to something that's a lot more tragic or, or more dramatically uh, astute. Um, I like that the movie focuses on the process of acting. I mean, this is also a great movie about acting, about uh, and, and just um, you know, the, the nature of creative expression. Um, which again, it's kind of for, for Divine G, uh, he kind of dismisses it at various times of the movie as being sort of silly and unnecessary. I think there's a great moment in the movie when, um, you know, he's walking on stage in one of the rehearsals and, and, and uh, excuse me, Divine I kind of resists it. And Divine G tells him, walk on stage like you're a king. And again, Clarence Macklin is so great in this movie. I mean, his demeanor completely changes in just that one moment. And you can see the power, not just of being on stage and being an actor, but also having like assurance in yourself. Um, and I think their relationship is great. And I agree uh, with the with the person that you were uh, sitting with, Todd. Uh, the end of this movie is absolutely wonderful. And it doesn't feel contrived or hokey in any way. Uh, it feels true. And I just I also just love that the hybrid reality fiction element of the movie it's just it, it's it's wonderful and it's a shame that people might not get a chance to see it to me this kind of a24 has botched some movies before they botched the florida projects oscar campaign the, the one that also comes to mind is waves from a few years back which wasn't as good of a movie but that seemed like it was going to be an oscar contender no one saw it it just completely went on by the wayside so i really hope people get get a chance to check out this movie because you're right it, it's hard to imagine anyone actually sitting there and observe and absorbing it and not being moved by it all right, Todd mentions briefly, the story credits, the writing credits on this are awesome. So it's based on a book called The Sing Sing Follies. You've got four or four people credited with story credits. One is a director, and then three are people who are a part of it, including the real Divine G. But I think my favorite is in the writing credits, you also have a based on the play Breaking the Mummy's Code, written by the acting teacher, Brent Buell. Nice. Yeah, it's I want to know who that guy place. is. Like when he first started, I was like, "Is he an inmate too?" And he's just like in charge of this group. But uh, he must have just been doing like some charity I work. That out either. I was curious. Yeah. Well, he had I, the I lanyard can't... on, which told tells should tell you he's from the outside. So hmm. yeah, I think yeah. he was just, apparently. He was Apparently, a prodigious writer can write 147 pages in a weekend. I mean, that's that's impressive. And can get Freddy Krueger and Mummies and uh, Hamlet. I mean, that's that's impressive work right there. Paul Racy, the man. All right. Well, we are thrice approved on Sing Sing. Go find this movie. Go see this movie. Like we said, it's not playing many places, but it's worth finding and seeing. Um, Todd had one other person in it. I saw the Showtime right after Todd and there were probably 20 people in there. I had a mm -hmm. lot of talkers though. Like there were some people that were carrying on conversations about the movie during the movie. And like, I just, just shut up, shut up. <laughs> they, 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 okay. So go see Sing Sing.